Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Is backstage heat on a SmackDown star changing things for the better? I'm Ollie Davis, this is Lou Gowen, welcome to the Wrestle Ramble. And before we get into that uh, particular topic, I was looking through the YouTube comments mm. on yesterday's Wrestle Ramble episode, and a lot of people kind of pointed out that the show feels a bit different to normal, Luke. Yeah, I sort of got the sense that that, that was what people felt. And to be fair, I, I kind of felt that too. Yeah, yeah. And well, Did you work it out? Well, I've looked into it, and I'm pretty sure it's... the. I'm wearing the different jacket to normal. So I've, I've got the leopard print jacket that I can just take off. Oh. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, there it is. I reckon it was here all along. Oh, God. Do you know what? For a second, though, I did think I thought someone else was pretending to be you. No way! Yeah, no, it was really weird. It was actually like uncanny yesterday. I was just sort of sitting there thinking, who is this guy? You seriously thought that? Yeah, like yeah. I was like a fake Ollie yeah, or something? Yeah, but now... Now, I just I can see you again. There, you go. yeah, yeah. No, the, no, Ollie, no fake Ollie, imposter my, stuff here. No, my Ollie blindness is gone. There we go. God, that was warm. I'm glad that that little gag's out of the way because yeah, it's sweaty. I was like a Michelin man. So, right, this is and this is kind of one of those unfortunate subjects where we're going to talk about the benefits of someone being injured. Mm. So that I, I feel bad. I don't want anyone to be injured, of course. I mean, yesterday we talked about the benefits of Vince being dead. So you talked about. The benefits of Luke, Reti- Luke say, talked reti- about we Luke, say retirement. Talk, yes, Luke did talk about the benefits of Vince being dead. So this is Big Cass, and Big Cass seemed destined for a big push after coming back from nine months out with injury. He comes back on SmackDown, immediately enters a feud with Daniel Bryan. We're all kind of like, this is Daniel Bryan's first big singles mm. feud after his own coming out of retirement, and. It, it seemed to be going that way until reports of backstage heat on Cass. Uh, apparently this isn't the first time he's had heat backstage on him. And it was it was because of the Montreal... The Montreal incident. It was probably a bit vague there. It was the Smackdown show in Montreal, which was the go-home show for Backlash. Big Cass beat up a little person as part of a segment. Mm. And apparently he was told not to take the beat down so far. But Big Cass sort of did it anyway. Yeah, Even so with Vince McMahon's expressed displeasure. Yeah, so he came out and he was berating the little person who he was just pretending was Daniel Bryan. Doing a... I guess his shtick was, I'm really big and... Daniel's really small, which I guess is quite limited to work with if you are, I don't know, I know you're seven foot, but like that's quite, that's not a lot to say, but he had to do that for like a good three minutes. And then he, he hits the guy with the big boot and then begins to lay into him. Apparently he was allowed to go as far as the big boot, but he yeah, wasn't, supposed, was he end, wasn't yeah. supposed to like sell it even further. And uh, he did. Imagine pretending someone was someone else like that's, that. It's... It wouldn't work as a joke. No, no. it wouldn't at all. Uh, so, yeah, but this this brought heat backstage, apparently, on Big Cass. And it just so happens that Sunday at Backlash, he loses quite decisively to Brian in seven minutes, taps out. And not just a, a tap out after some struggle, it was an immediate tap out. And then mm. the week after that, he wasn't on the show at all. He wasn't on SmackDown. The week after that, Daniel Bryan beat him up quite handily as well yeah so again uh, Cass comes out and does the I'm, I'm so tall. good I'm so good and you're so not and everyone was going you tapped out and he was like yeah I tapped out but I'm still really tall still seven I'm foot still mate. I'm still tall because you can't teach that mm. you, you you can have cod liver oil and you might get there but other than that you kind of you have to be sort of born with it yeah uh, and then yeah he gets in the ring and he's about to do a little yes chant and Daniel Bryan unleashes all hell on him and again it was like a decisive beatdown so you've got this we're not. This is speculation on our part, but it does seem like Big Cass has some heat on him. And now there's. It, it was the report was that he was injured on the European tour. Mm, so he'd uh, been selling that injury. They were saying he was selling the injury from Brian because yes. Brian went for the knee as well in that in that beatdown. He 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 drop kicked him in it. He chop blocked in it. Uh, he heel hook at the end. He did the heel hook and he of, also leg. he ran it into the old uh, post a few times and then yeah, Cass limped to the back from that. And then apparently backstage he was limping to sell it. And then during the European tour, in one match he was it in Amsterdam, he drops off the apron to he gets a tag, he tries to drop off the apron to uh beat someone up on the outside, but he lands on his knee on the way out. Mm. And then he's limping immediately after that, chases them round the ring and hits the apron in frustration. Yeah. Which if it is 
if he is sort of selling an injury there, it's pretty good. I I thought it was a one. It's a good limp. Like not everyone can limp. Uh, a pimp limp. A pimp limp. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not the sort of like Croydon boys like limp that I sort of went to yeah. school. I mean, I went to school in Birmingham, I think. Wherever, yeah, Luke yes. is from, yeah. yeah, yeah, Birmingham, Liverpool, Liverpool, that's Reading. The one. Yeah. It, it changes every week, like the Joker. Uh, but yeah, it's if this is a work, mm. like you said, pretty decent work because. Bit like a lot of dirt sheets are reporting, is he injured or is he just selling this backstage? You usually don't, wrestlers aren't committed enough to sell the injury backstage even. Mm. So it does kind of hint that it isn't a work. Uh, but the, the upside of all this, whatever the situation is with Cass, is whether it be by heat or by genuine injury, Daniel Bryan is free from that feud that seemed destined to carry on through at least money in the bank. Mm. And now, Daniel Bryan, he fought Jeff Hardy this week. He's facing Samoa Joe next, next week. week. Yeah. In a submission showdown, I guess. Can we just have a moment? Yeah, that's pretty epic. Like, I, 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 I don't know if I've got the, the image here. I'll show you. Uh, everyone else is just going to have to imagine this. This is the picture that I'm showing Luke of uh, the stare down at the end of this week's Smackdown between Samoa Joe looking like he's about to kiss. Daniel Bryan. Mm. They're very close to each other's faces. Doesn't Bryan look into that? Yeah, he does actually. He's like, mm. this is my moment. And then beneath that... He's quietly Samoa- whispering yes under his voice. Yes, yes. yes. Close. Do it. Do it. No, yes. no. No, yes. Yes. Just yes. grabbing the edges of the towel and just <laughs> pulling him in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and underneath that bit of homoeroticism is from ten years prior mm. in Ring of Honor. This is another image I'm showing oh, very nice. Luke right now. Look at that. And that's like, I wasn't well, I wasn't cool enough to watch Ring of Honor back then, were you? No. I was a, I was a few years after that, but I've caught up on, on the divids, on the digital versatile discs with the sort of Nigel McGuinness and Brian and Joe. Uh, it's just for, it's it's absolutely extraordinary stuff. And I'm, I'm so bloody excited. Mm, I, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. I think, mm. I, to be fair, I thought just the, the sort of, Build up this week was just a hell of a build. I think Joe is so good on commentary, yes, and so good on the mic that he really sold every single bit of this as if it was like this is such a big thing. I'm gonna murder this guy next week. Yeah, and yeah, he's he and he's so good at working back from whatever the other commentators are saying and then linking it again into what he's sort of trying to put across this idea that he's just going to put Brian to sleep next week. He's very credible. He's and so that, good, that is yeah. sorely uh, lacking from most of the commentary crew. Uh, but yeah, so we, Samoa Joe was out on commentary, like you said, for the main event. And it was a main event that was built up throughout the night, deservedly so, because this is Daniel Bryan versus Jeff Hardy. You had something you wanted to say on the Jeff Hardy promo immediately before the match. Oh, yeah. So I just... I don't... <laughs> He's done this. I guess it's just this sudden, like, why is everyone being? Because Alexa Bliss was doing it yesterday. She suddenly had a real interest in history. Jeff Hardy comes out of the locker room. First of all, just going, hey, hey, like this weird psyching himself up whoop. But it is as if he's, you said, as if he's done a well, bump. Yeah, uh, like, a, yeah, some extracurricular <laughs> yeah. substances, let's just say. Yeah. Which. Do you know what? He's got history. He's got yeah, priors. I mean, <laughs> um, which is fine. Just don't get in the car, mate. Yeah, that's it. Or face sting. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> so he comes He comes out and he, he makes all this noise and he has a little interview. And he starts banging on about how his... Synapses. Uh, his, cere- yeah, his synapses, his cerebral mm-hmm. is firing, his neurons, and he's thinking about ladders. Yes. The things he can do with ladders. Yes, the things I can do with ladders. And it's like, well, climb them and jump off them is the two, I guess. Really. Well, he's, that, he's I very, think you're he's, he's very, he's very yes. inventive with ladders, but I just... His synapses are firing with ladders. It was it was the uh, it was a drug addled promo. Yeah. It felt like. I mean yeah. maybe he's just drawing from you know another neural place. pathways yes. are saying black and decker. But it was it was a it was a, a weirdly intense one and just the mm. way he, he did come out of a room going, Whoa yeah, come on. That was just a bit, you know. Well, they were both, I, I liked it. I, yeah. I like wrestlers showing personality. I, the, the worst thing is for everyone to be flattened out into a sort of Tamina or Natalia robotic speak. Even if it's wit- like the Ultimate Warrior. Mm. It was nonsensical, but it was definitely engaging. <laughs> it was so, something, yeah. I much prefer Jeff Yeah, I guess the thing is he was also trying to match 
Brian's promo from earlier mm. in the evening, which was also like he was hyped. Yes, and he he was he was visibly hyped. He was audibly hyped, and he sort of he was reverent as well of facing Jeff Hardy. He said Jeff has you know won everything that you can possibly win, and he's a legend. Mm. But I'm gonna tap out the legend tonight is what he said and he had the the one, the one line that I was already excited for the match mm. uh, since I think it was announced a couple of days before when Big Cass was announced as injured on WWE social media or website or whatever and I was I was already into it and then Daniel Bryan had a line where he went Daniel Bryan versus Jeff Hardy in 2018 yes yeah and it, like I was like bloody hell mate yeah you're right that is quite something. And that, that, to SmackDown's credit, because WWE sometimes just chuck these matches on. Uh, I mean, you know, this only had like three days worth of build. Uh, but they did make it feel like a big deal. And what did you think of the actual match? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, yeah, yeah it was actually a very good match. I'm not always overly keen on Hardy's matches mm-hmm. that involve a lot of... I, I guess the, they, made the, they made the difference here, and they played it very well, that Brian is a technical wrestler. And Hardy is a high flyer and a risk taker. And so for a lot of the match, Brian worked sort of like keeping him down, putting him in wrist locks, doing a bit of submission work. And then once Hardy got rolling, you were like, okay, now I like this now. that." And there was a lot of uh, full setups for things. The Swanton Bomb onto the knees. Was that was really, a good That spot. was really good. Um, yeah, I just thought it was... Uh, sorry, I'm just reading your notes now. You... you, you I need to. You're cheating. Yeah, I'm cheating. There well, was there was a, that there twist was that, of oh, fate there, stunner. There was a twist of fate stunner. That's they do the twist of fate as a stunner now, rather than like an yeah. RKO thing, don't they? And Jeff Hardy does an actual swanton bomb rather than a professional wrestling trying to protect your opponent swanton bomb. Yes, now. that was he's. I, 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 it was a. Uh, he was on a podcast, wasn't he? Mm. And he said he lays it in now because he's just protecting himself, so no one <laughs> likes no one likes taking the swanton, which is probably why Daniel Bryan was like, "I put my knees up." You know what? Yes. Uh, and then there was a good bit on the outside, I thought, where Brian went for the jumping knee, missed. Mm-hmm. Hardy gets up and he does the, he flies in with the uh, clothesline. That so was great. That bit there, that's where I was like, wow, they're really laying this into each other. Mm. They weren't pulling any punches. It was a very like the submissions look snug, and I love it when da- like how Daniel Bryan's been able to change his style into a more ground based thing, a bit safer for his head. Mm. But then like near the end of the match. He just throws himself around anyway. So it it does it nicely builds the action. It, I don't know how much it's protecting him though. Uh, but yes, the the finish was Brian locking in a heel hook, mm. which was the same move he did on Cass. He did on yeah. Cass, yes. And injured Cass, as far as the story goes. Mm. So th- and then you know that was the finish. Jeff tapped to the heel hook, and I I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a video that WWE put up of Brian watching, I think it's his match against Chris Jericho in the NXT days. You know mm. when Jericho was a coach? Yes. And Brian's sort of given his very honest Brian-like commentary on the match. And he says, well, this this was in the days when I wanted the heel hook to be my finisher. And Jericho helped me put that over ah. in the match. And, on, and then like a few days later, he's winning with the heel hook. Brian's reasoning is he is a leg-based submission guy. In mm. actual MMA, when he when he actually grapples, and that's his strength. So if someone outclasses him somewhere else, he'll always attack the legs to get that heel hook because that's his real life finisher. Oh, that's the thing. I don't mind that about sort of also branching out and having more finishers. Mm. I, I I don't like the fact that every match sort of ends with the setup to the same finisher. Like, I and mean, there's because there's only ever so, so many things you can do. Like you dodge this and you reverse this into this, and like not everything's as versatile as say like the RKO, which can literally come out of nowhere to paraphrase to not even paraphrase uh, yeah to actually just said exactly as it is but yeah it's not it's submissions especially aren't that versatile like how many times have we seen AJ roll through into the calf crusher now yeah. like that sort of and it, it was awesome the first few times and then it becomes like okay it's cool that he keeps doing it but like now all the sort of finishes now the submissions have to have like the same set up almost I, I get you yeah I'm not, that doesn't get to me as much I, I love submission stuff and I I know I love if, submissions if I, would just, I would love to just see like if you just have different three finishes, different yeah. submissions that you can just like, they're all equally as deadly like especially if you are a submission guy like I wouldn't expect yeah. Jeff Hardy to have four 
really dangerous submissions. No, absolutely uh, and not. And AJ Styles, the the single calf crusher submission works quite well for him. But yeah, Brian definitely he could he could he legitimately could win with same with three Joe, same with things. like Joe and yeah. and all the other sort of like MMA styled. Yeah, you know, so Ronda Rousey could even obviously the armbar is the main one, but she could she could potentially do more if she wanted to. Should we get on with the full review? It's a SmackDown review, Magal, I love it. We got us a flying Uso. So the actual SmackDown episode began with Miz TV and the New Day were going to come on and they were going to uh, sort of pick Ooh. which New Day member. Which? Yes. Yeah, which? Uh, which one will go on to Money in the Bank? Have you seen the Money in the Bank men's ladder match graphic recently? Yes. It looks packed because they've got all three members of the New Day on there. Yeah. And vacant. They should just have a pancake and then a silhouette. Mm -hmm. And that would just be... Pancake with a question mark. Yes. Yes, that's how I would make a thumbnail. <laughs> uh, the uh, Can I introduce you to the Miz effect? pancake. Yes. Paperclip. <laughs> Uh, can I introduce you to the Miz effect, if you're not already aware? Please do. There is a theory that the Miz is the man responsible for what show is superior. Mm. Smackdown in 2016, right after the brand split, that was when the Miz, like the modern era of the Miz, started with all the Daniel Bryan talking smack mm -hmm. stuff. Then he gets drafted to Raw. Smackdown falls off a cliff. So 2017 Raw Miz. Amazing, Miz Taraj. Mm. He, he does save a lot of that mid-card segments. And now... Back on SmackDown. As soon as he gets drafted to SmackDown, that again becomes the more enjoyable show. Mm. He's think, the apparently he's the only constant in quality. I think it's it's interesting with Raw and SmackDown now though, because Raw took so many people in the shakeup. Like that's so packed that they've got so mm. many things. I think SmackDown's got so little to work with that they managed to just put people in logical sort of feuds and things that they seem to be sort of matching people up a bit better because probably just because they don't have hundreds of people to choose from and they have to give them all a little bit of time every so often to make it worthwhile having a contract with them in the first place you say that though but who wasn't on this show no randy orton mm. no uh no bludgeon brothers i think smackdown's quite deep uh, may maybe it's the two two hours versus three hours that roster thin and is exposed more on raw yes but the i think the quality of the smackdown guys is so far oh, beyond. That's good, yeah. it, like even though you've got fewer people, yeah, like Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Daniel Bryan, all on the same. Brand. Yeah, I was thinking about this on the way here as well. Is mm. they've actually lost a lot of the sort of undercard, yes, uh, men's competitors as well. It's almost like, and that's you know, we'll cover it later, but that's probably why Almas is having so many Jobber McJobbersons come along. You know that kind. Where's of... Where's Mike Bennett when you need him? Yeah, that's yeah. well. Where is Mike Bennett? Poor Mike well, Bennett. Apparently on Raw. Uh, so the the Miz had this New Day segment and. He got to promote his reality show on July 24th. That's when it's That was his big premiering. exclusive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Miz and Mrs. Mm. And he, he got a chant going for that. He got a chant going for quite a lot of stuff, actually, didn't people he? People like the Miz. He was surprised, actually, yeah. what he could get people to say. Uh, so he then sort of tries to create this tension within the New Day. So really, like, putting over each guy's massive uh, positives and their shortcomings. So, Kofi, you've been in... Eight Money in the Bank matches. No one's more experienced than you, mm. but you have never won one. Yep. And then what was Big E's? It was like you're big, kind of the. Yeah, it was. It was you're big, but uh, you you have too much fun. That was you it. Don't you take you it don't take it seriously. Enough. And then mm. Xavier was. You've built this YouTube empire, but. Do, I mean that translates nothing, very well to combat with sports. It. And then he yeah. said, "What? What was he? He didn't call Fortnite Fortnite. He called it Fort Fortnite. I Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah, something like that." So you are a keen uh, gamer, aren't you? Yes. Um, of course, because you used to be really into retro games, but recently you've gotten into more I've, up to date yes, stuff. Yes, in uh, almost overnight, while having this cod liver oil, I learned a lot of things about different games. Because you gotta, you gotta do something while you're well, yes. intravenously injecting. The yeah. Cod so liver I was oil. sort of the, the cool thing about it is it gives you sort of this this wider perception of the world where you can take in multiple feeds. Of stimulus at once, mm. so I was playing some games. I'd like. Have you seen Limitless? Yeah, I'd, with I, watched, Cooper. I watched some stuff that wasn't horror films. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. Nice. Uh, so Fortnite. Fortnite. I need. I need found out what Fortnite was literally at the weekend when my sister's the biggest game in the world. Yeah, yeah. When my sister's boyfriend's son, who's uh, ten, started flossing. Oh yes. And apparently, because I was like, "What's?" I, I asked him, "What's the? What's the cool thing?" that the kids do at the moment. Is it still the dab? And he looked at me like I just pooped on the street. Mm. 
Because you, uh, you were it's all about you were, the floss now. You were essentially talking about the Visigoths to him yes. at that point when you said the dab, because that's mm. how fast culture moves now. Especially for kids. Mm. So for, so Fortnite is is the thing. I watched yeah. a YouTube video on it. Yeah. Seems seems fun. It's a, de- it's a depressing game to play because you spend a lot of time looking around houses or warehouses or whatever, searching for nice things. You're like, oh, look, nice gun, nice nice this, nice that, and then someone shoots you and takes it. And oh. that's it. I don't you're think not I've, good at it. I don't think I've ever fired the gun successfully at, oh. at a thing in that game. I thought you were meant to be... Are you not a good gamer then? No. You're just a terrible you just like gamer. it. Yeah, I'm just really into it. But um, Same as wrestling. So the uh, back to the New Day stuff. The New Day all started to put over each other. Like, that. you know, mm. the only disagreement really here was that they wanted... Like, Xavier wanted Big E to do it, and Big E wanted Kofi to be the guy. And they never actually revealed who's going to go on to Money in the Bank, so that will hopefully be announced next week. But I thought they really put over... Xavier Woods in particular, his promo. Mm. Xavier Woods really got over New Day as a unit and how they are actually a selfish... uh, Sorry, a selfless Mm. faction. They're all about the team, whereas Miz couldn't be more opposite to that idea that he is all about himself and that's what that's exactly what Xavier said yeah, yeah. So the one thing with you is like you've been everything you've been a champion you've headlined mania you've won the money in the bank blah 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 blah. but the problem is you only ever think the problem is is that you only ever think about yourself mm. so that was that was really nice and then they just start throwing pancakes at Miz yeah. doing the Game of Thrones shame thing oh I enjoyed that that yes. was that was a good laugh. Which chased Miz off, uh, presumably because he's got a gluten intolerance. Yeah, that was it. It was uh, bringing him out in hives mm-hmm. as it was hitting him. Uh, and he runs into Paige backstage, and Paige was like, nope, go back out there. You've got a match with Big E. And they had. Like, I, I've said it in my SmackDown review. I won't go over it too much again here. Miz, for my money, is the most improved WWE in-ring wrestler of the year. Mm. He has gone from just a promo guy, in my eyes, to something happened in that Bala Rollins promo pro- program where he's very enjoyable to watch in the ring now. Oh uh, yeah, because he, he, he sort of—I think it started when he started doing the Daniel Bryan feud, and he worked in a few new moves, came mm. up with a few new bits of stuff, and obviously a lot of it was Bryan-related, uh, cheap heat stuff, yeah, like yeah, cheap like heat stuff. Kicks, but yeah. it, it worked, like totally. And it, and I, ju- I do think he's just. I think a lot of that Big E match was Big E playing the hits, you know, the, the you know the, the wiggles and all that kind of stuff, and just dumping him over with some Germans and things like that, mm-hmm. or the belly to bellies. There was the the splash on the outside on the apron as well. Oh yes, which always looks like it sucks. And they did a nice spot where Big E had a break, and they did the boxing thing where they uh, Xavier and oh, yeah, Kofi yeah, put they, the they, Vaseline, and, and the then water. they yeah they no it was uh, syrup wasn't it? Oh, was it? Syrup? It was syrup. It was pancake syrup. <laughs> Uh, but the I, yeah, I got into the match. I thought they had some good near falls at the end. I'm just really into Miz at the moment. But the bar ran down because mm. that's a feud that I forgot about. And Sheamus and Cesaro kind of cause a distraction. Kofi does this awesome spot. That's so good. Where he leaps off the, the steel stairs and then off of Cesaro's shoulder and takes out Sheamus. Looked incredible. It did look really cool. And that's why they played it about seven times. So I thought, look at this again. It it was that was great. Typical WWE. Yeah, we did something good. Exactly, now, and then watch it. and then and then Miz gets the uh, skull crushing finale off the sort of surprise, and mm. and then pins Big E. Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, did you see the guy also in the crowd? There was a quite a lingering shot of it, but the guy with the sign before the New Day came out, and he was he cut a little hole in it, and it just said "Insert pancakes." I did just, they? I they just, didn't. Do it. No one. No, they didn't. That was a, that was a, a missed payoff. Ah. I like signs like Especially that. Especially as he was sitting, obviously, quite near the front. But mm. it was... And they had two guys on commentary as well, with pancakes. So, uh, Next up was... What you're saying, they should have got off commentary would and you gone eat, into would you the crowd. Eat, would you eat a New Day pancake? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Because there was a guy in the entrance who really enjoyed that cereal. Oh, that was... Yeah, they, mm. they sort of um, flash danced him. With yes. it. Yeah, he, yeah he, he had his mouth open wide mm. for that. And... I don't know. But then he got hit by just the rapper. As well. <laughs> he was like, "Yes, yes, yes, rapper." Ah. Uh, so would you? I don't think so. I don't. It's the gluten. Again. I don't. Well, I don't think they're making them fresh. Mm-hmm. First of all, and second of all, quite often they come from inside the clothing of the new day. That's a good point. Which get a bit of biggie sweat, a bit of oil. Well, yeah, that's it. You know, some biggie oil. Depends might if do he's you been, better if than he's, if he's been oiled in syrup, then 
May. And it's sticky. That is good. That is gonna sticky. Be, yeah. Next up, Struggling we had to ping it off. <laughs> Big Cass walking backstage. Uh, see, see, you can see in my notes here. Sometimes I write down jokes that seem funny at the time, uh, then but then I never use. So from Big E to Big Cass, that mm. was that was my big segue, but never used it in the Raw review. And Big Cass is kind of hobbling on crutches backstage. Didn't get a promo. Didn't get anything. They replayed the Brian beatdown footage, so it's just like. Yeah, person persona non grata. He, well, he did. He sort of didn't. He just go like, "What are you looking at?" To someone mm. that was it. Was kind of that was the end of that little segment. Him just hobbling around, going, "What are you looking at?" So, well, and off the back of that, the limping was the, giant man, I guess, is the. He's still big. He's still big. That's the thing. It was Daniel Bryan, and this is the second time in two weeks that he's he's sort of found a new area, wherever mm. they are, whatever whatever arena. Daniel Bryan is going to find the stairwell and light it blue. And then shadow box, waiting to be interviewed. It's kind of like what the Undertaker used to do mm. when he was badass days. Uh, but yeah, it's that a weird was... warm-up space. <laughs> that was the uh, the part we talked about earlier when he really put over the Jeff Hardy match coming mm. up later. Then we got <coughs> Aiden English. I know. Oh right, I thought you looked at me. No, no, I, I know. I know who Aiden English is. <laughs> I'm aware. We've discussed him before. Yes, on yes, the yes. show. Uh, and all the time yeah, man. for a year. Uh, and he was he was hyping Lana, yes. so you know there was some concern that Rusev Day was going to be broken up, but there was no Rusev here. It was Lana and Aiden English. It's been expanded. Mm. It's no longer just Rusev Day. So that's that that it made me feel warm inside. Yeah, and he's got a new chant as well. What was the? It was uh... Lana is the best. Lana is number one. Lana yeah. is the best. Lana is number one. And that was, I think that started back in the Mixed Match Challenge when they, Rusev and Lana were paired up. Because uh, uh, people will slaughter you in the comments if you say that's a new thing. Fine. So I'll just point that out now. We know. Uh, and yeah, so Aiden English did a really good job of hyping up uh, Lana. And then the Iconics came out. They did their own song. Took the mic, yeah. Yeah, really well. Uh, because it was very annoying. They did a duet and they sung Lana is a Loser. Very out of tune. Good heel heat. Yeah. Like the Iconics. They are good. Mm. They're just annoying, and that's uh, the bratty and annoying, and they do it really well. Uh, and the crowd are going, like, Aiden English did a really good job of getting the crowd into this match. Lana versus Billy Kay was one of the more heated matches on the show, <laughs> yeah. purely because of English. He got the Lana Day sign at ringside. Oh, yeah, with it, and that got its own little throat clear as well. To yeah. Bring that out. yeah, that was a good bit. And uh, a Lana Day chant was going, and that distracted the Iconics, allowing Lana to hit two moves and win. Yeah, a She's big going old, to Money in the Bank. A big old kick and a face buster. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've written down X Factor, but yeah, I yeah, guess that's sort of straight up face buster. Yeah, because that was X-Pac's one, but... What would it be called for Lana? You want to try a uh, immediate pun? The, no, there's not. I don't know that. That's, uh, I feel like they do like the unravisher or something like, you know, like, like the unprettier kind nice. of deal. Okay, let's go with that for now. Or she the, hit an the, unravisher. Or to the win. ravisher would just you know that. That's yeah, you ravish someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Lana in Money in the Bank. Are you are you excited or are you concerned for people's health? I Chiefly th- her own. Well, I think it's obviously so they can use English to open. That match, yeah, that's a good. Point. I think that is that's what this is. This is so they can have English come out and hype the beginning of the match, uh, and then hopefully Lana gets knocked out for a lot of it and doesn't like, get anyone hurt. Yes, uh, maybe. I just just came to me. Mm. English could win the women's money in the bank match. That would be Ellsworth did it last what year. What an epic idea! This is truly you are thinking like. Like Class A WWE writing talent. Trolling to the top. Uh, but yes, this was Rusev Day seemed to be very in sync here. Lana and Aiden hugged at the end. Mm. So keep this going. On Velarde, Cian Almas was next. Uh, it started off with a backstage promo from Zelina Vega, his business manager. Started slightly awkwardly because they cut to her for a good like five seconds before she started speaking. And she was she was smiling. Like, mm-hmm. Which just doesn't, mean and then face. yeah, and then she mean faced as soon as it was like, and you're live, which she'd been live for a while, uh, and they said they were disappointed with last week's jobber, yes, because they want more competition, uh, and I thought this, uh, and they 
remedied that by having another squash match with yeah, a local jobber. Stephen Jobs. Yes. Uh, but he was good. I thought he took a hell of an elbow that, from Elmas. That was an incredible elbow yeah. as well. Like Because it, it looked like he was going for a kick and then just turned into this devastating elbow. It was That was awesome. And the, like Elmas was on top all mm. the time, but the jobber did get two strikes in. And and like Almas was like, no mate, you're not doing that. Mm. And I thought that made the match even better. Uh, it was a double knees to the front and then a double knees to the back of the head as well yeah. in the corner. Almas looked great, um, but again, I wouldn't really put him in this spot as he's first hitting the ground. Well, running. no, I think he's. It's the problem is he's come off the back of two like match of the year contenders with mm. Gargano and also then an amazing match with Alistair Black as well. And but I think the thing is, people on SmackDown don't actually know who he is, and that you could hear that when he came out, and there was not really a reaction either way. There wasn't a boo, and there wasn't a cheer. There was just sort of it was flat. And then to have him just squashing people, he looks better the longer he goes. I think the more he can build up, and the more stuff because his his moves are cool, but they're not devastating. They're not mm. like it's not like the Bludgeon Brothers coming out and chucking people around. Yeah, in that, and hitting in people that with hammers, you know, like it, it's there's like softly hitting them. Obviously, the sort of Triple H, yeah, where it, the hand gets yeah, you, most you of sort them, of your own it's, hand. It's a punch, and you sort of like do that. Yeah, um, that's a good point, though. The that squash matches do kind of lend themselves more to big, impressive guys. Yeah, and I think the the problem with it as well, like, because also with the Bludgeon Brothers, that was their pro their program was squash matches for against jobbers. And you got the the scream and all that stuff in that bit, and that was all really nice. But people know who those two guys are. Mm-hmm. Then they moved up the ranks to the next set of jobbing talent, which would be the sort of undercards. They they had a few matches against Brizango and yeah. stuff. And uh, did they face the Ascension. The Ascension, think, yeah. yeah. So they faced the Ascension and Brizango and that sort of stuff. And then they started to tear through the actual like main event tag division. So I, I would have thought it would be better to have something like. Almas coming out and beating someone who is recognisable, like Heath Slater, would mm-hmm. be because sort of, he's still fairly popular, yeah, and known for actually having. So he's got some titles under his belt as well. So like people would think he's a legitimate talent. Is he on SmackDown? I've lost track of. I where... think Slater and Rhino are back on yeah. SmackDown now, but it's really hard to tell. But I'm pretty sure they're on SmackDown. But yeah, that's what, that's someone Heath Slater. But this like. is this is what I was thinking yes. about on the way here. It's like who is who is on the card. That is of this level that mm. Almas could squash. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that, that you are right. SmackDown doesn't really have an undercard, which what makes the product so enjoyable mm. at the moment. Uh, I, I think, I still think Andrade should have just come in and beaten Jeff Hardy for the US title, that would and be then start a program awesome. that way, or maybe not beat him right off the bat, but start a te- going after Hardy at least, and then you associate Almas with that level of uh, that caliber of star. Mm. Uh, but I don't think building him this way is... It, I don't think it's working. I yeah. don't think he's he's getting over this way. Next up, we had a Carmella interview with Dasha. It was short and sweet. She had her own Asuka mask. Mm. Still building the Asuka match. She said Mella is money. Mella is money. Not much else to add there. I don't really know what it means, but yeah, fine. So that, like, the WWE interview style is, of course, Dasha here just asked Carmella a question and then just held a microphone. And then she goes off on one for ages, yeah. But... That's that's Dasha. That's Charlie. Renee Young is special. Mm. And then in the the next segment was Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles. She faded off, didn't she? She just I don't know when she got out of the ring. Yeah, she went. And next up, it's here's Shinsuke, and then she was just gone. Have like, you seen Infinity War? Yes. Okay, so it's almost like, uh, of yeah. course, we saw it together. It's almost like you know someone clicked their fingers and yeah. she started to fade away I don't want to go Vince I don't want to go I don't feel so I'm good scared. Shinsuke <laughs> uh, so someone please uh, turn that into a gif for us if if you're still listening by this point someone has actually sent in your they, they've overdubbed your voice on Ronda oh lovely yeah I'll play it to you later oh wicked I haven't watched it yet I'm into it so, so uh, yes Renee Young starts by conducting this in ring segment and then Shinsuke interrupts her and does one of my pet peeves in WWE, which is the wrestler introducing a clip on the Titan Tron. Oh, so yeah. So he effectively says, let's wait before we go on. Let's see how I won yeah. the right to choose the stipulation. Let's rewatch my greatest hits. <coughs> that should have that should have happened before. Yeah. And then... It's so stagey. 
Yeah, and it just why would AJ just stand there and watch it? Like I don't. Yeah. I, the, that's the thing I didn't get about this segment, and I actually did like it. Mm. I, I thought Shinsuke was like he just played the heel well here. He did. He's just very good at being annoying and just mocking. And yeah. I don't even though he was doing sort of like a really like almost incomprehensible Japanese sort of voice at some times and the crowd were literally going I can't understand you which mm. they did for the Iconics as well who are Australian so maybe it's just an American thing but uh, yeah he was really playing up to that and he came across really really annoying and what I didn't like about this was that AJ never just went for him yes like yeah. because he was he was so grating and that's why I think they should have if they were going to run this segment that long because I felt it was too long the, the chat was mm. too long yes I agree uh, they should have had Rene Young as an intermediary. Yeah, just to stand in between them. And to stand in between them and ask some questions and keep the peace because mm. I just don't think, considering what's happened between these two, and considering two of their matches have ended with them literally brawling so hard that they've not... They no one's so no, hard. No one's won properly, yeah. Brawl hard. They've, yeah, they've brawled hard. They've low-blowed each other into oblivion. It's been dick kicker mania. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the... <laughs> Uh, the, and the other thing about AJ's character is mm. that he's a hothead. Yes. So why didn't he just... But Because Nakamura builds up to revealing the stipulation and then he says, it's going to be a pillow fight. Which I thought was... That was funny. Great gag, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then AJ's like, ha it's going to be a pillow fight, is it? That's funny. funny. See, the weird thing is that the pillow fight when AJ said it got the bigger laugh because... Oh, did it? I, I just think because people couldn't understand Shinsuke. Oh, yeah, there, there is that <laughs> just as well. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. It took subtitles. me a second to be like... Okay, yeah, fine. Mm. Uh, but the the AJ laughed along with that. I I felt kind of undermined, and the whole two men talking. My, <coughs> excuse me, uh, my turn, your turn, style of WWE promo. Like you said, really undermined that feud's intensity. But Nakamura then goes to punch AJ. AJ punches him. Come in. Yeah, and they uh, they have a re- a pretty decent brawl outside. I thought that was great. <coughs> I thought this whole like. I thought that was a, a smart way to reveal the stipulation as well because they, they brawl on the outside and then uh, AJ throws Shinsuke into the timekeeper's area and he starts dismantling the commentator's desk uh, to obviously try and put Nakamura through it. Nakamura comes back, does a weird sort of suplex that doesn't quite mm. land him on the uh, on the yeah, yeah, so he just sort of falls off, but he lands in the perfect pose to be kicked in the head. And then uh, he gets the old knee to face. Mm. Uh, and then Shinsuke starts counting and gets to 10. Yeah, he's, and he's the crowd are chanting he says, along. He says it out, but yeah, everyone's ch- chanting yeah. along. And then he's like, stands on the thing and says, last man standing. A really neat way to announce a last man standing match. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I thought that was so good. And Shinsuke's counting was so obnoxious. And yeah. did, well, Shinsuke, also he yeah. then went in, he went in afterwards as well. And like, as AJ was still down and he's got up on the thing and he's announced the match, he gets down, AJ's still down and he leans over him and he's going, <laughs> quite quite like an he's it's, a really good heel he feels like he's been so completely good. rejuvenated uh, and like you always think that Nakamura's promo ability was what was holding him back on the in WWE not at all look no, at him stuff, here stuff is this was this yeah, better than AJ it was gold uh, next up we got a tag division still going Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson oh, no one knew yeah versus the Usos and the Usos and when was the last time we saw the Usos? Greatest Royal Rumble, like, in, mm. in my head, when they lost the titles to Bludgeon Brothers. Did they lose the titles there? No, it's They lost that. it at it WrestleMania. Before, it before that, Mania. So they had a rematch, I think, at Greatest Royal Rumble. We haven't seen the Usos for a while, <coughs> is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and they, yeah, this was, this was a fun match. I think the Usos are kind of the master of the SmackDown tag match where half of it is a commercial break. Mm. And they can make it really like high-octane action and, and engaging and fun, and you don't feel like you've only watched a three, minute, a three minutes of action. Yeah, it's you feel true. like you've done more. I thought also the promo stuff at the beginning was quite fun. It was, yeah. it was good having the... Uh, so they, what is it? So the, the, the Good Brothers, I don't know if they're going under that moniker now, but the, on Instagram Whatever it is, yeah. But, uh, on, yes, the, on the gram. On the grams. Mm. Doing it for the grams on Instagram, they are saying they're Good Brothers. But they said... Uh, you two brothers have already... So the Bludgeon Brothers have already faced you, and we don't want the... It's a lot of brothers. Yeah, and that was it. There were so many brothers in yeah. this bit. It was like, you brothers have faced the Bludgeon Brothers, 
and you've failed, and they don't want the failing brothers, we want the good brothers, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Because, and at the end of the day, Samoa Joe has a 33 and a third percent chance of beating me at sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. It's that kind of science. Yes. Yeah. Science, right? Science, we like science. We love science. Uh, so, Gal Anderson won this match, which is, is nice to see. Like, the Usos don't really need to go against the Bludgeon Brothers. Again, they, no. They're at a level already. And this does build up Gal Anderson. So, I'm excited for this. I think... I'm, I think that'll be a decent match. Yeah, I hope it. I hope it eventually swerves into, you know, Gallows and Anderson being up there and then teaming again with AJ in a more yes. sort of established capacity. Yeah, because obviously they've been doing it at live events for cheap thrills, but mm. it would be nice to see it as a more prominent thing. Totally. Uh, then we got Naomi beating Sonya Deville. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, was, no. and that happened. That was it a match, did, didn't it? Didn't it? There was no, I, it was a lot of entrance for Naomi as always, but and yeah. not a lot of match. The, I, I, the only things that really stand out to me is how they cut backstage to Becky Lynch and Charlotte watching that action, and I was like, oh yeah, Money in the Bank yeah. thing. So it, was it was weird was okay. though because Becky Lynch was watching a TV that was quite up here, and she was like down here in the shot. It was, it was going to make it visually engaging. That's not how you would do that. <laughs> how would you do it? We've got a camera. We, we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, you just one shot. Yeah, that's and it. You just, you Static never cut shot, it. and yeah. then we would have her describe the match that Naomi and Sonia Deville are having. T-shirts in the background, ugly headsets. Absolutely. What more do you want? Production value. Uh, we get some pyro as well. And then it was the main event, which we've already talked about. Huh, that, that finished more out of nowhere than uh, Monday's episode of Raw. <laughs> What did you think of the show overall? I thought it was really good. I actually yeah. really enjoyed it. Uh, I think if I was going to put a number on it between one and five, I'd put a three on it, or maybe a four. A four, really? I have. Gone I just for thought three. the bits. Yes. I thought the bits that were the the standout bits were really standout bits. In like, I thought Brian and Jeff was great. I loved the Shinsuke AJ bit. A little bit laggy, but mm -hmm. I really liked it. Miz, I enjoyed at the beginning in the New Day. I think it sets up some things nicely. And the Joe uh, Brian stare down. The Joe Brian stare down. Yeah, it's great. Pro I think as a setup, that's as a, yeah, as a setup show, mm. very good. Well, that's what it is. I that's my opinion too. But I think I would. It's almost like if this was an episode of Raw, I'd give it four out of five. Mm. But because SmackDown has has sort of adjusted my thermostat in what is a good show, this to me is like this is the level. WWE television should always be. Mm. All the matches have stakes. All the segments advance storylines. It never really dragged anywhere. I know we we criticised various bits for going on too long, but really, it was fine in the end. It, it, that's very harsh criticism on our part. Uh, nothing that there was no Bobby Lashley segment. His sisters were nowhere to be seen. Thank God. So, so that there was nothing stand out to me. It was just all very very functional, and that is. Like one of the best blessings I can give a show. Sometimes yeah, it was functional. It was solid. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. It built up everything. Everything for next week, and it's you're four weeks out from a pay per view, so you save these bigger angles for for later down the line. Mm. Yeah. And we're getting Samoa Joe and Daniel Bryan next week. That's gonna be so good. Yes. Well, that's all we've got time for on today's show. Unless you've got any any bits. Well, unless Big Cass comes back. Because that's unless the injury is a work and he's fine. And oh. so next week he turns up and interferes in this match. Or costs Brian the match. I, I think he'll probably cost Brian. Yeah. It's more likely I think he'll cost Brian the match and Joe will go through. So Joe is Mr. Money in the Bank, though, would be epic. It'll be scary. Yeah, it'd be I'd worried be really he'd good. He'd run in on me. He would just come out all the time, though. Yeah. I think that's, that's the cool thing. You could just make him... like I think when a lot of people would come out with the Money in the Bank mm. briefcase... You'd be like, and they're threatening, you know, like Carmella did it quite a few times coming out of the briefcase on other people's matches, looking like she might cash in. People get excited because I guess she's the first woman ever to do it. But if Joe does it and he's just lurking around, you'd be bricking it. Yeah. And I mean, if the title remains on AJ, that's a Joe AJ yes. sort of dynamic. Very exciting stuff. Uh, yes, that's it for today's show. Um, oh no, that was it, Big Cass So I think the original match was meant to be Big Cass versus Samoa Joe Yes And probably Samoa Joe would have won that this week mm. And now that they've put Brian against Samoa Joe I still think 
Joe's going to win that. Yeah. Gonna win, yeah. Uh, but sometimes replacements do win just to throw people off. But that is all we've got time for today's show. I'm not going to remember any more points. So please click the videos that have just appeared on our laps to catch up with the latest Wrestle Talk videos. Subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with all the latest professional backstage wrestling news. And this is this right here is a link to the podcast version, which is super good and straight into your ears. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen, and that was rambling.